Hey guys, welcome to Rough Riders. Thanks for stopping by. I uh, got another DIY video for you. Today we're taking a look at my TV. Uh, about uh, two weeks ago, uh, right before I left on a trip, uh, the TV just stopped working. Uh, I got the standby light, no power, nothing. Um, trying to power it on with the remote or the switch, nothing seems to work. I know my outlet and everything is good, so um, I thought I'd pull it apart and see if I can figure out what's going on with this thing and see if we can get it working again. So let's take a look. Okay, so you can see right down here, I've got my standby light going on. Um, and if I try and power it up by the switch, you can see I can get it to flash and things like that. Uh, so the switch itself is working, but nothing powers up. So uh, I decided to pull it apart and see what's going on uh, with this thing. So let me uh, take you around to the backside and uh, show you what's going on. Okay, so before we get started, I want to put a uh, caveat warning out there. Um, I am not a certified TV uh, repairman or technician or anything like that. I do have an electronics engineering degree. Uh, that is what I went to school for. Uh, so tearing this thing apart isn't something that I'm overly concerned about. But, you know, if you decide to do this, you do so at your own risk. Um, this may not be the correct way to repair your TV or the only way to repair your TV. Uh, this is just, again, what I'm doing for myself. Now, with that said, let me kind of walk you through what, what I've done so far. So, the only thing I've really done is I've pulled the black past plastic cover off, and there were uh, about 15, 20 or so uh, screws holding on the cover. So I went ahead and pulled those off. There were a couple um, behind the stand that I had, so I had to pull the stand off uh, to get the last couple pieces off and get that cover off. Um, and then I just put the stand back on it so that I could work on it here in my kitchen in a, in a nice open space. So um, that's what I've done so far. Uh, what you will see going on here is it's really fairly simple, right? You've got uh, a main power board here. You've got your uh, I.O. board here, you've got your switch over in this corner, you've got your LED down here, and then you've got your uh, 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 panel or TCOM uh, lights that, are, that drive, the, uh, drive the panel, right, the LED drivers. Uh, so that's pretty, pretty straightforward. Um, what I suspect is that there's either something going on with the power board or there's something going on with the I.O. board. And so we're going to try and figure that out because I'm not getting any, any power to it, right? As I said, I can hit the switch and I can see it trigger the, the standby light. So that tells me the switch is probably okay. Uh, I mean, I can pull it apart and, and, and check it, but I don't really think I need to do that because I think the power, it's either the power board or this I.O. board. That's my problem. So uh, we're going to start by uh, taking a look at the I.O. board or at the power board and uh, measure the voltages and stuff coming off that to see if we're getting power over to the I.O. board and it's the I.O. board that's a problem or if we're just not getting the power output. So uh, I've got it plugged in here and uh, there's just a simple little ribbon cable going over to the I.O. board um, and I'm going to show you a close up here in just a second. I don't have the schematics for this for this board so um, I don't know the full layout here, but on most PCB boards, what you're going to find is there's generally pinouts, um, like right, for, so right here, for example, and I'll show you a close-up of this in just a second. There's a uh, pin diagram for this connector, um, which is your main uh, connector. And uh, there will be other, other pinouts and stuff uh, listed for, for anything that's, that's on here. So, you know, a schematic would certainly be useful. But this is enough to at least tell me if I'm getting power across this board, across this ribbon cable or not. Okay, so what you can see here is that uh, the pin diagram shows you 1 through 11 on this side and then 2 through uh, 12 on uh, the bottom side. And so um, as you look at the voltages, it tells you, um, you know, what your pins are. So first one is a fail, fail count. And then it's uh, 13 volts all the way down until I get to the last pin, which is pin 11. And then on the other side, it's a label of what they are. So I've got, for example, power on off right here, which is a pin 8. Got a couple of grounds. I've got a couple of other signals there. Um, so I should be reading uh, some voltages on there. So we're going to take a look at those and see, uh, see what we see. Okay, now to, to start measuring things, um, 
basically I need a, a ground plane and so this metal chassis here serves as a ground plane for, for these boards and they're grounded through the, the screw holes here, right? In fact, they actually even show you how the, how the screws are acting as, as ground there. Um, so it's grounded to the uh, metal plane through these uh, uh, attach points. So in order to measure the voltages on these pins, I'm going to pull this ribbon cable off here. And one thing you'll notice is that these things uh, all started to light up. So that tells me that I'm actually getting power to the, the panel itself, um, which is a good indicator that my, my power board's probably okay. But we're going to verify that. So what I've done is I've set my uh, voltmeter on digital voltage, and I'm going to be looking for uh, voltages here. What am I voltages looking for here? I'm looking for on pins three through nine, I'm looking for 13 volts. Uh, and what it's actually saying here is the voltage for V13 is actually 12.8. Okay, so I pulled the cable off, I've grounded my uh, chassis. Uh, now I'm just gonna start measuring the pins. Um, my pins on the right hand side should be my one through 11 and then two through 12 on the left hand side. So. Pin one is that fail count. I don't know that we get anything there or not. Let's see. 1.1. So pin three, I should be seeing 12.74. That's uh, pretty close to 12.8. I'm going to call that good. Pin five, 12.74. Pin seven, 12.74. Pin nine, 12.74. Pin 11 should be ground and I got ground. Okay, so uh, all my power delivery side looks pretty good. Now we're gonna measure the other side, which um, like pin eight, let's see, two, four, six, eight, should be a, uh, about right about five volts, 4.4. So um, my, power, my power button is actually fine, or my power delivery is fine. So um, this board is actually looking okay. One other thing we're going to do is we're going to take a close inspection of the board itself. We're going to look at the capacitors and everything. We'll check the fuse on the board. I mean, the fuse obviously working because I'm, I'm getting power elsewhere, but um, so the fuse should be okay. Uh, but, you know, let's take a closer look at the board and let's make sure all the capacitors and, and all that kind of stuff look good. Make sure there's no burn marks. And, uh, you know, that'll confirm that everything's fine on the power delivery side. So that means it's probably going to be the other board. That's the problem. But let's take a closer look and see. Part of what we're looking for is like on these giant capacitors right here is we're looking for any bulging um, out of the top, anything like that. We're looking at like these capacitors. Those look good. At these smaller caps and everything, those look good. I don't see any burn marks. Um, like all of these look good. Not seeing any sort of scorch marks or anything like that. Yeah, this this power board's probably okay. So uh, I think what I'm going to end up having to do is replace this guy over here. So now I need to figure out in order to replace this board, I got to figure out what I need to order, right? And so there is a number right here on this sticker that reads BN9410834L. Um, the model number of the the TV is above it. Then I've got another sticker right here that has a different number, BN9711248A. And then printed on the board itself, there is yet a third number, BN41-02528. So I'm going to go look, uh, do a quick search and see if I can find any, if any of those pull up a picture of this board and see if I can get a replacement board ordered. Okay, so I did some searching on the uh, part number here that I found on the board. Um, and on Amazon, it's $290 uh, brand new, plus seven bucks shipping. I did a quick search on eBay. Um, and this seems to be about the going rate, about uh, $80 to $90 um, for a used board. Um, and then I found uh, this place here, shopjimmy.com. Uh, actually has a kit with the power board and the uh, main board for 99 bucks 
They, I tried to find just the uh, main board by itself. It said they were out of stock, uh, and it was normally priced eighty-four dollars. Uh, but you know, so you can buy one board for eighty bucks, or get them both in a kit for ninety-nine. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and do. And that way, if this board by itself doesn't do it, then I can go back and swap the uh, the power board as well, and see if that uh, takes care of it. The other thing is they give a hundred and eighty-day warranty, so that's kind of cool. Okay, so I've got the replacement board ordered. Um, I've already got the uh, ribbon power cable disconnected, so I just need to disconnect the rest of these cables. I got two two more ribbon cables here. I got a speaker uh, wires here, and then I'm not sure what that little uh, box is doing. And then I got one going to the switch in the uh, IR LED. So we're going to disconnect that. I think the um, replacement board does not come with this plastic piece, so. Uh, I'm just going to transfer that over to the new board when it comes and we're going to go ahead and pop this off right now. These just pop off like this. And just little connectors and then this one should just squeeze out. I might need to get a screwdriver for that. And this has a little clip right here. And that one does as well. Come on. Like that. And like that. And we're good there. So now I just got to pull the screws on this and let's see where they're at. Looks like this, oh, it looks like it just slides on. Should be a screw holding it right there, but it just slide. Just like that. Okay. Okay, the, uh, replacement boards came so here is the old board here uh, as I was suspected it didn't come with the, the the replacement board didn't come with the plastic piece so I just pulled that off but here's the uh, old board that I think is bad um, I've looked over the board and there's no scorching there's no you know it doesn't look like there's any damage so I'm not sure which component on here might have failed but uh, you know all the indications suggest that's the board that needs to be replaced, so we're going to try that. Here's the replacement board. It did come with um, all of the uh, other accessory cables and all that kind of stuff that are wired in, but uh, I'm not going to need those since everything else is already mounted in place. So I'll just pop these things out and uh, use the, the wires that are already there. And then the kit did come with the extra power board as well. Uh, so we're going to uh, just kind of hold this in standby just in case we do need it but uh, let's uh, let's put this thing let's put this thing in and let's see if it fixes the problem okay so we're gonna go ahead and pull off all of the uh, extraneous cabling there we go. it did not use any screws to uh, attach to this it usually four slots so I just need to lock, line those up and slide it in like that. Now I can hook up the existing cables. And by the way, uh, I did connect, did disconnect this from power before I hooked everything up. So all right, let's uh, let's power it up and see if it works. Okay, so I'm getting my standby light there that's a good sign so now let's uh, let me put this on the tripod and uh, power it up here goes nothing voila there you go so uh, I think that seems to have uh, corrected our issue uh, the system is powering up 
that so it must have been that board that just went bad. So I'm getting our uh, boot menus and all that kind of stuff. So there you go. That's all it takes to to uh, fix and repair a TV. Or well, that's all it took to fix and repair my TV. Uh, based upon the troubleshooting I did, you know, I wasn't sure if it was the power board or the I/O board. I was actually thinking it was the power board. That's is what I originally thought it was going to be because I wasn't seeing power across. But um, after I measured all the voltages and everything, turns out that you know power board was was measuring out fine, uh, and it was just that I/O board that would need to be replaced. So uh, there you have it. So if you got a, a TV, whether it's a Samsung, LG, or whatever, they're fairly straightforward. Just you know. Um, you got a you got a couple couple boards on the back. It's gonna typically gonna be one of those two things that needs to be replaced, and you know you can save yourself a, a, you know quite a bit of money to troubleshoot and stuff yourself. So there you go. Uh, if you got any questions or comments, please leave them below. I'll get to those as soon as I can. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for watching the video. If you like the video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe to the channel. Um, I'm always doing a lot of DIY projects and things that you know fixing things that broke and doing maintenance and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and just sharing sharing what I do and how I how I go about it. So uh, please consider subscribing, and uh, we'll uh, see you next time.